Welcome to Electro Online. So now we have an example that is slightly more difficult than the previous example we showed you. So here we have a cylinder instead of a prism. Now a cylinder would lend itself to using cylindrical coordinates instead of Cartesian or rectangular coordinates, but we want to learn how to do it with rectangular coordinates. So notice that our cylinder has a length of 4 in the y direction, a radius of 2. Notice that it's a circular cylinder, not elliptical cylinder, so that the direction in the x direction and in the in z direction, those units are the same, two in each direction, essentially the radius of the cylinder. So we're trying to find the volume of this, and so the volume is going to be the triple integral of a dv. dv is going to be a small little volume element that is cubic in shape, and of course dv will be dz, dy, dx, and we're going to try to use that order, starting with z, then y, and then x integration. What about the limits? Well, in the z direction, notice that if we start from the xy plane and you go up, depending upon where we are in the xy plane, you will not hit the top height of 2, you'll hit the side of that cylinder somewhere, the surface of the cylinder. So the limits of integration in the z direction are going to be from the xy plane to the point where we hit the cylinder, and of course since we have a symmetric bottom half that's exactly the same volume as the top half, we can just integrate from 0, the xy plane, to the maximum height we can reach, and we're going to then multiply this times 2, because z is going to go from 0 to the surface, which can be defined by the equation of the cylinder, x squared plus z squared equals 4, or z is equal to four, the square root of 4 minus x squared, or 2 squared minus x squared. So that means that we end up here with z equal to 4 minus x squared for the limits. Now once we've limited ourselves with the surface, notice that now when we integrate in the y direction, we're going to go all the way from 0 to 4, there's no restriction there at all, so y will be from 0 to 4, and in the x direction, since we already limit ourselves by the surface, which is the same all the way around, we're going to integrate from 0 to 2, the maximum value that x can be for the limits for x. So we only have one limit that is a function of the other variable, uh, the other ones are simply constant limits. All right, we're ready now to integrate our first integral. Oh, let's see here. I almost forgot. Notice that for the y direction, we went from 0 to 4, but in the x direction, we went from the center part of the cylinder to the edge. We didn't count the other half of the cylinder, so I also have to multiply times 2 as well, because I'm only integrating half the cylinder in the x direction and half the cylinder in the z direction, so I'm going to have to multiply times 4 because I'm only getting the volume of a quarter of the cylinder. All right, now we're ready to integrate. So v is equal to 4 times, we still have the double integral over x and y, and then this dz integrator will become z evaluated from 0 to the square root of 4 minus x squared. We still have dy and the x. So that means when we plug in the upper limit, we get the square root of 4 minus x squared, plug in the lower limit, we get 0. So that means that the volume is equal to 4 times now the double integral over y and x of the quantity, the square root of 4 minus x squared times, that would be dy dx. Let's see here. Well, actually, Since I have an x in here, it would make sense that I integrate over x first before I integrate over y, because I have an x in there. So I'm going to reverse the order of these two. So make that an x, make this a y, the order doesn't matter. So let's make this uh, an x and make this a y. So I'm going to integrate over x first, that makes more sense here, because I end up with the variable x after I plug in my limit. So that's typically why you decide the order. Now notice that this has the same format as this, so we're going to integrate and get this result. So we end up with volume equals 4 times the single integral over the y direction, we'll do that later, y will be from 0 to 4, and in the x direction we end up with this. So we end up with x times a squared, well a squared in this case would be 4, so that would be 4 minus x squared to the 1 half power divided by 2 and then plus 
a squared, which is 4 divided by 2 times the inverse sine of x over a, a would be 2, like this. And that's going to be evaluated from, well, in the x, we're integrating over x, that would be from 0 to 2. All right. We still have our dy, because that's for our last integral right there. Okay, and we probably want to put brackets around it because uh, we want to do all of this from 0 to 2. So volume equals 4 times the integral from y equals 0 to 4 of, when we plug in the upper limit, 2 squared gives me 4, 4 minus 4 is 0, so that gives me 0 for the first term. When I plug in the upper limit, I get 2 over 2, which is 1. The, inv the arc sine or the inverse sine of 1 is 90 degrees or pi over 2, so I end up with plus 2 times pi over 2. When I plug in a 0 here, 0 for x, I get 0, minus 0. When I plug in a 0 here, the inverse sine is 0, 0, so again I get 0, and a dy right here. So notice I get 2 divided by 2, which is 1, times pi multiplied times 4, so volume equals 4 pi times the integral from y equals 0 to y equals 4 of dy. Now that's an easy integral. The integral of dy is simply y, so we get 4 pi times y evaluated from 0 to 4, which is going to be 4 pi times 4, or with other words, the volume equals 16 pi. So that's the volume of that cylinder. Now let's do a quick check, because it's a cylinder, and we know that the volume is going to be equal to the area of the base times the height. The area of the base is pi r squared times the height. And so that would be pi times the radius is 2 squared times the height, which is 4. So that's 4 times 4, which is 16 pi. So indeed, very quickly, we were able to check to see if our methodology was correct. And it looks like it is, because we get the same result. Now you say, well, why did we do, go through all this trouble if we can just simply find the volume of the cylinder? And of course, that's correct. But it's all about learning the technique, learning how to come up with the limits of integration. So in this case, y will go from 0 to 4, and x will go from 0 to 2. But the z limits are limited by the surface of the cylinder. So when you go from the xy plane up, you'll hit the cylinder somewhere, typically other than z equals 2. And so therefore, z is then re related to the square root of 4 minus x squared, depending on what the value of x is. So that is how we find the limits, and that's how we do triple integration.